Israel finalizes its target list for potential strikes against Iran. The Iranian Guard has issued a stern warning of hitting back hard with warnings of unleashing a secret weapon deadlier than nukes. The Biden administration continues to press its close ally Israel to go for a proportionate response. Our next report tells you how both sides are ready with their potential battle plans, pushing the Middle East on a knife's edge. While Israel maintains a strategic silence over where and how it will strike Iran, the Israeli military indicates that it is ready with a list of strategic sites that it could target to cripple Iran. Netanyahu has reportedly assured US President Joe Biden that Israel's response will focus exclusively on military installations and not civilian infrastructure. a concession that has reportedly influenced Washington's decision to support Israel with an advanced anti-ballistic missile system. Both Israel and Iran are clear that military actions are imminent and inevitable. We have no intention of putting up with a violation of sovereignty and an attempt to harm Israeli citizens and infrastructure without responding. The response will be precise, painful and surprising towards Iran. If you make a mistake and attack our targets, whether in the region or in Iran, we will strike you again, painfully. A top Iranian general guard is adding another dimension to the tensions. Brigadier General Ibrahim Rostami suggests that Iran holds a secret weapon that could outmatch nuclear bombs in terms of destructive capability. Should the hostilities escalate, a potential target for Iran is Israel's Dimona nuclear facility in the Negev desert. Although Israel has never publicly acknowledged its nuclear arsenal, it is believed to have an estimated 90 nuclear bombs. Despite the tactical challenges that a potential attack on Iran poses, Israel has long-range missiles and fighter jets to deliver destructive blows to Iran. The Iranians too are bracing for an attack. The warning from Tehran makes it clear that it has enough long-range missiles that can damage key Israeli installations. The big question is how and when Israel would attack an outcome that could only inflame tensions further in West Asia. Bureau Report, Rion, World is One. For more on this, we are being joined by Peter Kuznick, Professor of History and Director of the Nuclear Studies Institute at American University from Washington, D.C. Peter, welcome back to Leon. What happens if a nuclear site is attacked? What is the fallout? In terms of radiation fallout, it depends on where they attack. Now, if they're just hitting the areas in uh, Natanz and Fordow that have the centrifuges and minimally enriched uranium, that probably the fallout effects will not be that devastating. But if they hit the nuclear plant at Bushadir, or they hit some of the more highly enriched uranium that the Iranians have, then it could be much more serious. So in terms of the broader fallout, the political fallout, I think it's almost certain that if Israel does attack Iran's nuclear facilities, not only will Iran retaliate in a very, very serious way, but Iran will probably rush for a nuclear weapon. We figure that Iran might be about two weeks away from developing it. Uh, under the old Iran nuclear deal, Iran was limited in the number of centrifuges it had and was limited that it could only enrich uranium to 3.67%. But now that Trump abrogated that nuclear deal, Iran is enriching to 60%. And to go from 60% 
the 90%, which is weapons grade, is really that not, not that difficult a leap right now. So they could have the nuclear weapon certainly within less than a month and possibly significantly less than that. And uh, Peter, what happens if a nuclear site, uh, you talked about what happens if a nuclear site is attacked, despite the fact that Israel said that it doesn't want to go towards those nuclear sites, at least that's the assurance that U.S. officials say Netanyahu gave uh, the U.S. But how and where do you think then Israel will target Iran? Is it going to be the oil refineries? Is it going to be other places that we still don't know? Uh, first of all, I don't rule out anything. There are people in the Israeli cabinet who are insisting upon attacking Iran's nuclear sites. And that has also been supported by mm. Donald Trump, by Jared Kushner and other Americans. So even though Biden says that he's gotten assurances from Netanyahu, they're meaningless. You have to remember that Netanyahu has two goals. Number one, to get Donald Trump elected. And number two, to get the United States into a war with Iran. So uh, I'm not sure what Netanyahu might do, and nobody is right now. On the other hand, he's, uh, Iran has also made clear that if Netanyahu and Israel strike their energy sites, uh, their oil facilities, then that would also provoke a serious Iranian response. The third option would be the military targets, which would be the least serious of all three. Americans also forget that while the Iranian leadership has sworn off developing nuclear weapons, polling shows that close to 70 percent of the Iranian public wants Iran to develop its own nuclear weapons. So and then the, then it gets really crazy and dangerous because if Iran develops nuclear weapons, it won't take very long for Saudi Arabia, United Emirates, Egypt and others to do the same. So then we have a, a tinderbox that really is ready to explode. Yeah, I don't remember tensions being this high in the past two decades, even three decades between Iran and Israel. We'll be watching very closely. And Peter, I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Thank you for that analysis. My pleasure. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the WeOn app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.